thirsty. Never a little more. Oh, yeah. 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 I love coming here. I'm never not going to come here. You guys are good to me. In return, I'm always going to be good to you. For a lot of people in the hip-hop generation, The Breakfast Club is where people get the information on the topics, on the artists, and everything like that. In that aspect, radio is still important. The Breakfast Club. When my name come up, respect it. Morning, USA. Hey, fam. Where's this yo, 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 yo? We got in the stash. We should have this yo, 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 yo in the stash somewhere, right? It's a Monday. Start it off right. All right. Well, I guess we don't have this yo, yo, yo in the stash. Can we try it again? Here we go. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo. Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJ MV. Charlamagne the guy will be connecting in in a second. He's having a little technical difficulties, but it's Monday! I know, that's right. Happy Monday. How was L.A.? Oh, man. Well, shout out to everybody that uh, came out to see us uh, in L.A. It was the L.A. Book Festival at USC. So it was uh, 10, 15,000 people, uh, so many different authors, so many different stages, just people discussing their books. And we had an amazing time in our, out in L.A. Uh, shout out to Big Boy. He does... Uh, Radio in L.A. He's uh, syndicated in a bunch of markets. We did his show first, and then we went to the L.A. Festival, Book Festival. And, man, did we have a great time. They showed us so much love. It's it's a place where, you know, people come to see you speak and, and come to hear you talk, but then people are just walking by and just sit down and just be engaged with your story. So we had a great time in L.A., um, a lot of books moving. I just want to say drop a bomb for everybody out there, all the listeners and all the people that support it. I mean, the book was sold out in Barnes and Nobles. Like people couldn't get it, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like all, uh, and it's not just New York. I mean, New York, Atlanta, uh, Detroit, Michigan, um, Florida. That's LA, great. It's also frustrating. You're like, Ohio. man, y'all got to put more books in the store, but they're so not used to people running to the store to buy books like that. Yeah, I mean, we did well on Amazon, but the fact that people went to Barnes & Nobles and all the local uh, bookstores and the mom and pop bookstores to purchase the book and it was sold out just means a lot. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. And everybody who re who's been reading the book has nothing but positive uh, feedback, nothing but positive comments and says that, you know, saying that they help their relationship and, and you know, they're going to go through some of the things that we talk about with their spouse. So we're super duper excited about it. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. If I tell you how many people came up to me and Gibby like, look, how did you have that conversation with Rashawn about faking orgasms? Because I need to have this conversation with my husband tonight. It, I told you a lot of people don't even know. It's, it's it's a lot. But, you know, it's it was just great, man. So shout out to all you guys for all the support. Now, how was your weekend? What you do? Uh, I was in Orlando. Shout out to Marcus Jordan. He opened a new trophy room store. Yes. Out there. So I was with my girl Koya, who does radio out in Orlando. And uh, that's we, Michael Jordan's son, correct? Mm -hmm, Marcus mm -hmm. Jordan. Shout out to Marcus. A trophy room. Mm -hmm. So we were at that. It, it was really fun. Of course, he had the Sincoro tequila, a little after party. Okay. And then I went to Knife and Spoon at the Ritz Carlton in Orlando. My friend, Chef Gerald Sombright, is the head chef there. So we went and had an amazing meal paired with different wines and champagnes. Uh, out there, I had a fun Orlando chill weekend. Yeah, and, and the only thing that I, I, I tried to get back for, but we couldn't because we had the LA Book Festival. Was uh, uh, again, rest in peace to K. Slay. He was uh, laid to rest. Well, his uh, memorial was Sunday at the, at Apollo. Uh, mm -hmm. So many different people I heard LL speaking, uh, Papoose, Remy, uh, Busta Rhymes. So many different people. So I just want to say, and again, condolences to his family, and shout to the whole DJ community, to everybody that pulled up, regardless of what station you were on or what whatever it was so shout out to everybody that that pulled up all right well let's get the show cracking rick ross will be joining us this morning boss rose so we'll talk to rick ross and then we got front page news what we're we talking about yes and let's talk about our brooklyn nets there's a lot of things that people have to say about ben simmons as the nets get ready to play tonight and see if they can come back from being down three nothing in this series all right we'll get into that next it's the breakfast club good morning Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, NBA scores will go over Saturday and Sunday. All right, the Raptors beat the 76ers 110-102. Uh, the Jazz beat the Mavericks 199. The Brooklyn Nets lost to the Celtics 109-103. 
The Grizzlies lost to the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves won 119-118. Now, last night, the Bucks beat the Bulls 119-95. The Golden State Warriors lost to the Nuggets 126-121. The Heat beat the Hawks 110-86. And the uh, Pelicans beat the Suns 118-103. Now, everybody was talking about Ben Simmons. He was supposed to play game four, but it looks like that's not going to happen, and uh, people are not liking this. Yes, I Reg- feel bad for any... Oh, okay. Ahead, I was going to say, Reggie Miller tweeted out, come on, man, after game four, when it was rumored you were going to make your debut, this dude has zero uh, competitive, a smaller chance as the Nets have to come back in the series. You still have Katie and Kyrie. All you need is to win one game and take it from there. And then Stephen A. Smith had some things to say on ESPN, and here's what he had to say. Who was his teammate? He quit on LSU. He quit on the Philadelphia 76ers, and now he ain't showing up for the Brooklyn Nets. We can point to all the excuses, all the rationale behind it that we want to. I do recall, despite him not playing, he still filed a grievance to collect $20 million that he has not earned. This is one of the most pathetic situations that I've ever seen in my life. And at the end of the day, when the NBA gets in the collective bargaining table and they go after the players in terms of a pay-for-play stipulation in the collective bargaining agreement, it's going to be called... The Ben Simmons rule. I'm just trying to figure out why isn't he playing? Is it injury? Back, it is, says back soreness. Back soreness. According to uh, sources, yes. And the problem with that is we've seen so many players, like, we, you know, everybody always thinks of Michael Jordan in the flu game. He had the flu and still played and gave it his all on the court. Your team is down. Like, this is the last game possibly. And I think anybody else would want to play if they had a little back soreness. Now, if it's a little serious, then I can't say. But, I mean, it just seems weird that you don't want to play. You don't want to give it your all. You right, don't want to leave it on the floor. Right, he requested to be traded from Philly. They said he had some, he cited mental health mm-hmm. as a reason that he was unable to play for the Sixers. He didn't show up for training camp. So, And he's good. Like, don't get it twisted. Ben Simmons can ball. He can play ball. But I guess for some reason, he's, he's just not there mentally. But, ugh. It's going to be a nasty one. Well, I just want to say the Brooklyn Nets is the only team that haven't won a playoff game this uh Well, they season. play tonight, so yeah, let's play see tonight, yeah. what happens. Let's go, Nets. Yeah, hopefully they win tonight. All right. Well, that is your front page news. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. Phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. Charlemagne is having a little technical difficulties. He'll be joining us in a second. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800 585 1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Yo, Big Chocolate the Toe Sucker. How we doing, family? Oh, Good morning. Here we go. Goodness. I actually thought about you last week, man. Hey. And that's what you did. Yeah. Oh, that's Thank so you. sweet. No, actually, Angela Yee was out. She was doing the casino by you, and I was praying that she wouldn't run into you. Oh, Foxwoods. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. Foxwoods, yeah. Did you win, Ange? I didn't even really gamble. I was there for this women's lunch, and shout out to Women Leading. Um, it's a celebrity brunch, but I didn't get to gamble. And MB, they pay you good money if you went up there and DJ, kids, so think about it. Now, I've DJed so, up there before, but I just don't want to run into you up there. That's the only thing. Uh, uh, two, you would love it. Things. Go ahead. Two quick things. Uh, one, shout out to Z100 New York radio host Martinez, Maxwell, and Crystal with the cr- crusty toes. Thank you for putting me on. And two, I got a, r- a very funny joke. Now, everybody knows Uh-oh. Envy's a pistol packing DJ, right? So here's the joke. <laughs> Used to be. When Envy went to the gun range, what did he say to Charlemagne? What? No, you can't bring your water gun to the gun range, stupid. Now, now that's funny. That's funny. Right, pal? <laughs> I didn't get a chuckle. I didn't laugh a little bit. I didn't find anything even. I was like waiting. It. Yeah, where was the punchline? Hello, who's this? Oh, it's the here. I'm calling in from Howard University. Is this DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God? Yeah. Yes, hey. yes, sir. To here. What's up, man? I'm doing pretty good. How y'all doing this this Monday morning? I'm out here about to go get into the gym. I just want to talk about how I'm blessed, black, and highly player, highly favored. Talk to me. What's how up? How y'all doing? Good. Good. Um, great. I'm I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. I'm out here at Howard University, you know. Um, HBC, the real uh, HU. DJ Watch your mouth. And you know the real HU. You know. Watch your mean? mouth you know, to hear. <laughs> nah, DJ Envy, I Hampton. You know how he is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want I just want to shout out all my other HBC members. You know, we're out here. Um, we're with all of our fellow peers. You know, we're grinding here. Um, so you know the HBCU grind is real. So I just want to shout out all the other HBCUs. Okay, what year are you? What's your major? I'm a 2024 grad Howard University finance major, you know. 
I'm, I'm, I listen to you guys every morning. I'm a big fan of your show. I'm trying to actually start a podcast with two of my siblings. Um, try to try to do something similar. We'll but do yeah, it, man. So you guys, yeah, but you guys are a huge inspiration. I just want to shout you all, shout y'all out, and shout all all my HBCUs. Yeah, shout to all the HBCUs. Can I get a clues bomb? Can I get a clues bomb for all the HBCUs? Actually, absolutely, especially at the university. You have a great one. Get your ass to class. Yeah, especially how University. Come on, MV. Come on, MV. <laughs> Don't do me like that now. Come I, on, MV. I tell you. Shout out to all the HBCUs, because when uh when we were doing this uh, book tour, all the HBCUs showed up and showed out. So I just want to say salute to all the HBCUs, especially Hampton University. Nick, what up, Nick? What's up, bro? How you doing this morning? Get it off your chest, Nick. Man, listen, I deliver appliances for Lowe's. Uh, all the Lowe's, actually, Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Hampton, all along, bro. And these customers got to start tipping, man. We deliver 300 pound, 400 pound refrigerators, and they do not tip, man. If y'all getting it delivered today, tip your delivery drivers, man. Yes, always tip your delivery drivers, please. It's hard work right now. Mm-hmm. Now, Nick. Yes, definitely. Let me ask you a question, Nick. What's a good tip now, Nick? Because that's that. Sometimes I be having a problem with that. What's a good tip? Twenty percent, at least. So no, Hell no. Me and my partner, what? it's always two people on the truck, bro. It's always two people on the truck. Forty dollars is decent. If you want to go above and beyond, cool. We'll take that. But forty dollars, that's easy enough, man. It depends on what they're delivering, too, they deliver doesn't it? They deliver a refrigerator. Refrigerator could cost Oh, a refrigerator? Right? Oh, okay, I thought, I thought we were talking about a regular tip. No, no. no I would get them, like, $100. People ain't got no $100. I need you, to deliver, I need if to you deliver got a brand new refrigerator time. and there's two people delivering it and they're taking it out and bringing it in your house and setting it up. Well, nine times out of ten, you got to get a, a refrigerator on a credit card because they're expensive. So you got to... I, well, I, I usually tell people if... if, if Pay for their dinner. Uh, let's say they it's a, it's a tough day. Dinner twenty dollars. Give them twenty. Dinner's about a hundred dollars. That's that, that's what I say. A <laughs> hundred dollars, and don't be cheap. Yes, yeah, stop being cheap, Evan. You have a hundred dollars to give them. Yeah, I give a hundred dollars. All right, good. That's people, what we talk about. This is a lot. I think it's twenty. I think you pay twenty dollars. Man, person. y'all deserve it. Dude, boy, you acting real light skinned this morning. Mm-hmm. Man. I said I paid a hundred dollars. I mean, but other people boy, ain't I got must, it. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> all, right, all right, cool. I'm about yeah, to give have you have a good morning, man. All right, brother. You too. Be safe out there. Right. Yes, sir. And we appreciate you, man, getting all them deliveries there on time. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Yeah, it's your boy Joe from New Haven. Joe from Connecticut, get it off your chest, brother. Okay, I had a I, well. Number one, congratulations on your book, Envy. Thank you, man. Did you pick it up yet? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm trying to get it the the audio book because um, I had called a couple times, you know, to to say, you know, I'm legally blind, so I gotta get the audio book. Okay. Yeah, so and, get, um, yeah, get it off audible, brother. Yeah, so you know, I just want to say congratulations. Thank I want to say good morning to all three of y'all. Good morning. And, yeah, I really want to ask for your advice real quick. Okay. Okay. So I'm my son. He's mixed, half Italian, half black. Mm-hmm. And sometimes in his school, he gets questioned. You know, they always question him: Are you black? Are you white? Are you Puerto Rican? And, I, and my best advice is to tell him, like, listen, you be yourself. No matter what situation is, you know, just you, you. I try to just to make sure that there's no color in his life. You know what I'm saying? Just love yourself. Don't worry about it and be yourself. Absolutely. Well, and he, he should represent each side. I mean, he's Italian and black. He, well, yeah, I'm no, sure he, no, he, he, he should be proud of both sides. Mm-hmm. He definitely do that. But I just hate, you know, it just, uh, I hate, you know, nowadays these kids, man, it doesn't matter if they're little kids or grown ups, they, they still, you know, they, they, they bullies. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, As a mixed child myself, who's half Chinese and half black. I just want to give you some advice of making sure that your child is aware of both sides Absolutely. of uh, who he is so that he can speak about it and be proud of it, too. Oh, yeah. No, he, he definitely knows. Believe me, because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I try to tell him, hey, listen, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm here. You know, I'm Italian. You know, his mother's black. And, you know, I just say this, you know, just be yourself and people are going to love you regardless. There you go. Well, you have a good one, no, brother. But- Hello, who's this? Yeah, this is Clint from uh, Alabama, man. I'm a, uh, first of all, I like to thank you guys for all you do, man, and inspiring uh, people that you don't even know you're inspiring. Thank you, uh, brother. 
congratulations on your book, MV. Thank you, sir. And uh, I got to get a copy of that, man. Please I've do. Been, I've, I've been blessed to uh, have uh, written and published, self-published five books myself. And uh, I really want to get you guys a copy of my last book, my latest book, uh, entitled Power to the People mm -hmm. from 1619 to Modern Day. And uh, just to get you, uh, you guys' opinion and just, you know, uh, happy I got through and I'll uh, just thank you guys for all you do. Man. Okay, well, well uh, send it up here. You, you have the address up here? No, nah, I don't have it. Um, well, hold, hold on, we'll get you the address, brother. Okay. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Welcome back, Charlemagne. Yo, what's the word? What's happening? We can hear you now. We got rumors on the way, Yeezy? All right, well, we told you that Black China is in court and she's going up against the Kardashians. Well, the producer for Rob and China reveals the real reason why their reality show did not get a season two. Okay, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's talk K Slay. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee oh. on The Breakfast Club. Rest in peace again to DJ K. Slay. He was laid to rest last night, exactly one week after he lost his battle to COVID. The memorial was held at the Apollo Theater. Some of his close friends and family were in attendance. Fat Joe, LL Cool J, Cool DJ Red Alert, Papoose, uh, Melly Mel, MC Pete Nice, Eric B, Busta Rhymes, Remy Ma, Van Silk, Art of Rap co-founder Mick Benzo, and DJ Chuck Chillout were amongst the people who were there. And you were there too, right? No, I wasn't there. Clue oh, was there. Okay. And I was in LA. Clue, Clue mm -hmm. actually, where shout to Clue. Uh, he told me the ceremony was was great. It was just so so positive to hear so many great things about K. Slay. And if you don't know, he just well, he was more than a DJ. Uh, he was a b boy. He was a, a graffiti artist, uh, a DJ. He was a label owner. He had his own a magazine. magazine owner. Mm -hmm. He he did so much. He he really embodied and loved hip hop culture. So definitely rest in peace. Bun B was there as well. So definitely rest in peace to to K. Slay. All right. Now, Robin China, the producer, has revealed why that reality show did not get a second season. If you recall, Black China is in court and she feels that the Kardashians interfered with her show continuing by using their influence over at E! Network. Now, according to executive producer Jeff Jenkins, he said that was not the case. During his testimony, he said when he first met the couple, they were really happy. Black China came off as witty. That led to them green lighting the show. He said, this was really exciting. That was the first and the last time I saw the couple happy. By the time it was time for the cameras to start rolling, he said they were already volatile. While filming the first season, they were constantly in conflict. He said she was furious with him, and he was furious with her. It was very negative. It was very difficult to shoot a show, Robin China, in love when they were not even talking to each other. He said the couple were encouraged to seek therapy, but that suggestion fell on deaf ears. And while filming... He said they were so disgusted with each other, they couldn't even be in the same room. So that's why they decided not to continue the show. Mm. There was no more Rob in China. Definitely can't have a show called Rob in China in Love, and that's what's happening. Well, obviously, yeah, they're, they're not. They're having problems. I mean, they're in court right now. So, I mean, I guess that was a good call to pull that off. This is not looking good for this lawsuit then, because she says the Kardashians interfered with the show. No, producers are saying. So the executive producer is saying that's not. It's not true at all. The case. Mm. All right, Chris Rock's mother, Rose Rock, she's a motivational speaker, and she's a family and youth advocate author, and she also was speaking in a one-on-one -on -one interview with WIS's Billie Jean Shaw, and this is the first time anybody that close to Chris Rock has spoken about the incident where Chris Rock was slapped on live television by Will Smith, and here is what Chris Rock's mother had to say on the slap. When Will slapped Chris, he slapped all of us, but he really slapped me. Why do you say that? Because when you hurt my child, you hurt me. If you were able to have a conversation with Will, what would you tell him? Oh my God, I have no idea what I would say other than what in the world were you thinking? Mm -hmm. Because you did a slap, but so many things could have happened from that. Chris could have stepped back and fallen. Yeah. Um, you really could have gotten taken out in handcuffs. You reacted to your wife's um, giving you the side eye yeah. and you went up and you made her day because she was bowled over laughing when it happened. Mm. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, anybody that has children, you feel that way. When your child gets hurt, you feel it just as, you feel it just as much. I mean, and the fact that she had to see her son get slapped on television, yeah, I'm sure she feels away. 
Yeah, man. That's something you think about, too, like how your parents view things. Because people could do stuff to you, but, you know, your parents take it so hard and especially, when they have to see that. Especially if you're not like that. Like, you're the kid that's cool and everybody loves. You're not a fighter. You're not a bully. And then when you see you get slapped, your whole family want to attack. Your brothers, your sisters, your your mother, your father, your aunts, your uncles. That, that's, that's how families are. Well, when questioned about whether uh, she thought that Will Smith's punishment was appropriate, here's what Chris Rock's mom, Rose Rock, had to say. And obviously, the Academy has now suspended Will Smith from coming to the Oscars. You and know, what for a does number that mean? Years. You don't even go every year. Uh, they so boycotted a year; they weren't even invited. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's all kind of funny. So you don't think it was a true punishment? Oh no. Do you think his award should have been taken away? I wouldn't take his award away, mm. and I don't see any good way they could have taken him out without disrupting. So I'm really, really proud of the way Chris handled it. Mm -hmm. Would you want Chris? and will to sit down and work things out. That would have to be on them. Mm -hmm. I guess she also said that he never reached out to Chris Rock after that. She said the people released a statement, but that was it, and she feels he should have reached out. Yeah, I agree with that as well. That's his mom speaking, so. And not only that, if you apologize, you know, through a press release, I think you should reach out to me and speak to me personally, or at least try to. If I, if I want to talk to you, I can, but not just send out a press release like it's all good. No, reach out to me. Talk to me. One-on-one. -on -one. And Pick we saw some phone. pictures of Will Smith. He's in India. I guess they're on vacation uh, right now. All right, now Chris Rock was in Baltimore, and he was a sol at a sold-out show in the Lyric Performing Arts Center, and they said he came out to the show, and uh, he basically says, I'm all right, I'm all right, healed from the nicks and bruises for the most part. And then they said he didn't mention the slap for the entire one and a half hour. A hilarious show. But they did say at one point he was talking to somebody in the audience, and he asked the woman her name, and she said Jada. And then he said, sit your ass down, and the place erupted. <laughs> and that was it. So he still hasn't referenced it in anything, but the only thing he did do was when he came out, he was like, I'm all right, I'm all right. So people are still waiting to see what he's going to say. But he did post Eagle Death World Tour 2022, all new material. So, you know, I yeah, don't know. I, I wouldn't reference it either. I mean, he already created an hour set for this tour, and that's what I would give them. And then when I go home I process it and do another set then I'll go back out on the road but right now this is what I planned this is what I practiced this is what I I worked out and this is the show I will be giving to people as well and since we're talking about hosting Diddy is going to be hosting the 2022 Billboard Music Awards on NBC that's going to be his hosting debut that happens on May 15th it's also the 25th anniversary of his first Billboard Music Awards win in 1997 for his album No Way Out so congratulations to him he said, this will be unlike any award show. I'm bringing the love and setting the frequency at an all-time high. I think that's going to be dope. I think he got a new project coming out, too, so maybe he'll yeah, do some music. Yeah, he's been working on that mm -hmm. uh, for quite some time. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Rumor Report. Charlotte, you there? Am I? Oh, yeah, wait, you there? Okay, I right, think I hear you. I hear you. Man. I hear some static. You've been telling me this for the past hour. I hear some static. Now it's static? Yeah, I hear a little echo, too. Jesus Christ. Yep, he's, he's gone. gone. <laughs> as soon as he said Jesus, he was gone. All right. Jesus like, don't talk about Jesus, me. Jesus like, don't talk about me. <laughs> we got front page news next. What are we talking about? Yes, and a 14-year-old boy was shot by a homeowner as he was playing the doorbell ditch prank. We've been telling you this oh is boy. not a good prank to play. Not at all. We'll get into it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. If you're a true music lover, you live for that connection with your favorite music and artists. Now, thanks to One Of and the NFT revolution, that connection is about to get much deeper. Learn more about One Of, the new green NFT platform built for the music community at oneof.com. Let's get in some front okay. page news. Now, Sunday night NBA scores. The Bucks beat the Bulls 119.95. The Nuggets beat the Warriors 126-121. The Miami Heat beat the Hawks 110-86. The Pelicans beat the Sun 118-103. Now, the Brooklyn Nets is the only team that hasn't won a playoff game. And everybody's talking about Ben Simmons nope. was supposed to return uh, tonight, but it looks like Y'all don't want happening. that. Yeah, he said he has a don't want back that. soreness. Why would y'all want that? The team chemistry already sucks. Okay, Kyrie Irving out here praising the Celtics chemistry. All Ben Simmons is going to do is come back and add to the uh, cohesion, the, the the lack of cohesion that y'all already have. Well, Shaquille, Why would y'all want that? Shaquille O'Neal speaks on Ben Simmons not playing tonight. In the hood, we call this a punk move. You know, when things are going good, yeah, I'm going to play in game four. Chuck said it. You can play on Saturday, you can play on Monday. <laughs> now that they lost, my back hurt. Well, if your back hurt, get some icy hot out, 
<laughs> Listen, three things the Celtics have that the Nets don't. An incredible defense, one of the most elite defenses I've ever witnessed on an NBA court. Uh, two, team chemistry. Kyrie Irving out here praising the Celtics chemistry. Well, it's chemistry y'all could have had if you maybe was playing Kyrie. And third, great coaching. Steve Nash sucks. I've said it a million times and will continue to say it. He's terrible as a coach. His idea of coaching is give Kyrie and Kevin the ball and get out of their way. All right, That's now, not going to work in the playoffs. A Long Island man is accused of shooting a 14-year-old boy who rang his doorbell as a prank. James Moshier, who's 64, was charged with assault and recklessly injuring a minor with a deadly weapon. On Thursday, they said he shot the teen in the arm on his property around 9 p.m. The teen knock, knocked on the suspect's front and back door several times. A woman inside thought they were being burglarized, so she woke him up. That's when Moshier went to the back door and allegedly fired a shotgun at the teen. Several teens were attending a sleepover with the shooting victim, and they said that he and another friend got bored. They decided to pick a random home in the neighborhood to doorbell ditch. They said sometimes what we think are harmless pranks turn into major incidents. That's what the police captain uh, said, that people need to be smarter. So the teen did get treatment at a hospital, and Moshier was released on $20,000 bail ahead of a court date next week. So the teen didn't die? No, he's alive. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I mean, in New York, oh, people, listen. you know, New York and New Jersey, you're not allowed to shoot people on the property. They have to be actually in your house, so I'm sure he's going to be charged. But also, I would say this, too, as a, a homeowner and uh, somebody that has a family, six kids, if somebody rings my doorbell in the front or and the back of my house, I, I'm thinking you're coming to burglarize me. Honestly. Yeah, people need to stop playing. People need to stop playing. Everybody's on edge. You don't know if somebody's trying to break into your crib. You don't know if somebody's trying to rob you. And guess what? I'm not going to sit around and wait no, to I'm see not, what happens. I'm not going to ask. Hey, you know are what you mean? here to rob me or are you just playing a game? No. It, if, if you don't got no business on my property, don't come on my property. If you ain't bringing no food, if you ain't dropping off no packages, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Other than that, you don't have no business doing that. And for Period. kids listening and, and, and for listen. parents, we've been trying to tell y'all this doorbell ditch prank is not a fun, good prank. It could go terribly wrong, as we've seen in this situation. Yeah, and it's easy to say to somebody, oh, well, he overreacted. You cannot tell somebody how to react. So don't put yourself in that situation to begin with. How about that? But now he's being charged with a crime. So Yeah, that's because he shot outside yeah. the crib. But he shouldn't. I, I don't, well, I don't think necessarily he should be charged. You ring the doorbell from the front, and you go into the back of my property, ring the doorbell and play? Mm, I don't know. Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. If he's charged for shooting, right, what if his gun, I mean, what if his dog would have would have attacked him? Would he have been charged with that too? Because it's all my property, and this is what the dog is there for. So I'm just protecting my property. So whether I'm shooting or the dog six, gets sicked on him, am, am I going to be held liable for that as well? Yes, you could be. All right, now a Because you came on my property and rang my bell? It doesn't matter. You still got to go to court. doesn't mean that you'll get prosecuted, but you still will have to go to Jesus. court. Jesus. I'm speaking from knowledge. All ahead. right, now in Fairfax, Virginia, a house got five all-cash offers and sold in less than a week for $805,000. There's one caveat. Mm -hmm. There is a person living in the basement. So you only thing is for whoever bought this house, this unnamed buyer... According to public records, the home got all of these offers, but there's no access to even see the lower level, and you have to buy the house. What state is this? In Fairfax, Virginia. Mm. You see, some of these uh, states, they have uh, <laughs> where you just can't kick people out the crib. It's a tenant's law where it's a tenant-friendly state, and you just can't kick people out. You just can't make them leave. It'll take you some time. And I know a lot of people are like, no, I'll get them out. I'll get them out. But the law is uh, for them. So you have to do uh, ways to get them out. Like sometimes you have to pay tenants to get out of your house. Mm -hmm. We've had some situations. Oh, you met like, like a real before. person, ye. Yeah, yeah, like a real person. Somebody tenant. lives downstairs. Just doesn't want to leave. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were talking like a monster, like the people under the stairs or no. a spirit or something. No. I thought you had to bring somebody in there the to sage the place, no smudge the place out. They live downstairs. And that clause is in the purchase price. You know, um, over the uh, last year, I was buying a house, and I put an offer, and it got accepted. But then they said that there was a tenant living there, and I would be responsible yep. for them having to leave. And my realtor said that wasn't a good idea. Nope. Because especially with COVID right now, you can't just kick somebody out. And I didn't nope. want the responsibility of trying to get somebody to move out because that could take years. And so I had to pass on that. But that is something to think about when you're uh, trying to purchase a home. Yeah, one time I bought a crib, it had no power. The guy had an extension cord from another house into the house that I was buying. And he was watching television. <laughs> and I had to try to get him out. I had to pay him to leave. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do is try to give somebody some money to get them to leave. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that is your well, front page is, news. Is, is the person willing to work? 
what what's their lawn maintenance skills like? Can they cook? Mm. Like, can they earn they keep in some way? No, nah, they were just chilling. <laughs> and it's <laughs> also just not yeah, a guarantee, man. you know? Once you buy the house and close, the person could be like, I'm not leaving. And especially with COVID, you, it's really, really hard to kick somebody out. Yeah, it is. It's, it's difficult. Well, that, that's when you say to the person, I want to help, help, help me help us by, you know, cleaning up around this place. Okay, make yourself useful. It's not going to work. Be a handy person. It's not going to work. All right. Well, that is front page news. You know, they even had Uber Eats delivered to the house. The, the guy that had the extension code, he was getting Uber Eats to the crib and all that. All right. But when we come He's back, eat. Rick Ross will be joining us. We're going to kick it with Rose. And we're going to talk to him next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. And y'all better not start arguing and fighting in here. We're not arguing and fighting. We got Rose <laughs> Rick Ross is here. And you the brother Freddie. It. What up, Freddie? What's up, my boy? What's up? You already know, man. The 454 boys in the building. <laughs> the real classic riders. Okay. So so if you don't know Rick Ross, I mean, you don't. Rick if Ross you don't know Rick Ross. Car show. <laughs> He's doing a car show at, at his uh, on the promised land, his own property. Right. Now, me and Ross go back and forth about cars, right? All the time, all, all the, the time. time. But, you know, I'm, I'm always honest. Ross... And I tell him that not because he's here. He probably has the biggest car collection I've ever seen in what my life. What you mean, probably? Show <laughs> <laughs> oh, that man some respect. You and Jay Leno. Come on, this is... You and Jay Leno. Okay, that, that's honorable. You that's and Jay honorable. Leno. I respect that. But Ross got about that. 200 cars, and he continues to buy them. Mm. Yeah. How many just, cars you got, Envy? Not 200. Not 200. I got about 20, but not 200. But let's talk about... I'm going to tell you what they say through the grapevine. What they say? Uh-oh. I'm going to say, they say DJ MV got three sports cars in a Suburban. That's oh, that's it? So that's he got four cars. They, that's four? <laughs> okay. Now, Freddie, you've been to my car show, and you've yeah. seen the cars that I bring and that I have. Yeah, yeah, I see And you've seen the that. licenses, and there ain't yeah. no payments on none of them. So you know it's more <laughs> no, than yeah, that. Yeah, I see them. I see them. I see them. Yeah. Yeah. But now, let's talk, talk about well, why'd you want to do this car show? Well, really, I just felt like, you know, growing up, I felt like the car culture was just as significant with the music culture the same way fashion is. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and just being real, I always loved doing the dub covers, the dub mm-hmm. interviews. And I just felt like over the last 10 years, the culture really been dying out. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for G's like yourself, Flex, Greg Street in Atlanta, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's really been dying out. So it's like we reinvested in and what we really own because mm-hmm. the streets determine the standards. Absolutely. Not Rick Ross, not Freddie, not you. The streets determine the standards in that city to city from the West Coast, East, and of course the South. All right, so let me do some co- comparing here. All right. All right, so Ross, what is your most valuable car that you own? Um, My most valuable car to me, it's got to be uh one of my Trey Fives. Mm-hmm. I have maybe 20 Trey Fives, you know what I'm saying? 55s, 56, 57, Bell Ass. And what mean the most to me is not based on what I spent the most in. Because he's built multiple half a million dollar bills for me from the ground up, frame off. You know what I'm saying? You know what frame off mean? Mm-hmm. Envy? envy, what does it mean? Absolutely. We start from the frame off. Frame off, there's nothing but the frame, and you start from the okay, engine. Okay, okay. All right, look at everyone's knowledge. Don't, don't he, Googled, tra- I, I, he Googled that fast. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. The only reason I don't like He's the old tight. school cars is because I don't... don't know, hold on, you really saying that? You making that statement well, let me you say, don't let, like let me rephrase old that. school? I prefer newer cars than the old school cars because the old school cars take a lot more maintenance. Right? Yeah, yeah. Not That's necessi- what Ross loves Not about necessarily. Him. I'm going to be honest. Okay, go ahead. Because I have a lot of the new cars as well. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of those. But guess what? After you put 3,000 miles on those, guess what? The value done fell through the floor. For some of them. Once one of those lights come on, oh my God, you don't know nobody that can repair that. Some well, of them. Well, Emmy, what's your most valuable car? Uh, I got a couple. Probably my Ford GT, my 918. But my, like he said, the car that means the most to me. Yeah, that's my, my most valuable. M3, which is a 1988 BMW. And that was one of the cars that the drug dealers had when I was growing up, and I always wanted one. So when I got a little money, I bought it. And that's my baby. And that's what I love to hear the most, because the other cars that cost $2 million, a lot of these guys will put a, a quarter million dollar down payment on it, keep it for a year, and then swap it back mm-hmm. in. Once you become a part of my collection, we keep you until the day I die. <laughs> You're good, no we ain't trading nothing. We ain't swapping it out. The lights on, it ain't cranked. They're afraid of it. Nah. What's the first car you ever had? The first car I ever had, it had to come from my grandfather, May Rest in Peace. That was a 76 Caprice. 
Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you, where did you get the mentality to invest as much as you do? I don't think there's too many people in the industry that invest and has a, a better winning record than Ross. So where did you get that mind from? Growing up in my household, my mother really gave me that blueprint. And that's what we did. So that's just like my love for cars, we turned into a business. Mm-hmm. Here we are, we having a car show May 21st on my property at mm-hmm. my crib. That's 750 a ticket times 750. Mm-hmm. 750 a ticket? Yeah. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, we separating we separating the little boys from the big boys. And that's what this is about because it's just not about the cause. This is about networking. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's big boys in here. We talking big money. And everybody that's got any business to do with the car culture, this way you really want to be at. So what you get for that 750? Oh man, you get a lot. Okay. The networking platform oh, just the, itself. Okay, the networking the, alone yeah, is To me, worth- of course, you get to see my whole car collection. Mm-hmm. You're going to get to see. How many cars do you have, bro? Oh, man. I'm a, well, when they finally told me the <laughs> space they gave me, the space I'm calling billionaires row, I'm going to put 100 cars in that space. I'm going to put 100 cars and maybe 20 motorcycles. You know, I got race cars. You know, I'm going to really let them see my, my tank. I got a tank. I showed them, yeah, I got a real <laughs> army tank. Yo, <laughs> I, I haven't put that online. I got the real fire truck. You know what I'm saying? I got two NASCARs, two real <laughs> NASCARs. And I'm sure I'm lining up. I'm just letting people see my five roads races at one time. My this, my that. Then, like I say, we don't trade nothing in. So Ready? no one else is putting cars in the car. No, so everybody. Yeah, everybody. Oh, they, okay. Yeah, I was like, we no, don't no, really no. need anybody no, else. No, we, yeah, we, we, we he don't didn't. need nobody else. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't. The whole car show could have just been all my cars, and then I could have lined up the whole 200 plus. <laughs> but we want to really just let the culture come together. I love to be inspired by the youngsters in the streets, Absolutely. the little homies from West Palm, the Haitians from Dade County, the homies from Carolina, Chicago, and that's what it's about. I want to see all the whips. I'm walking up. Who did your interior? Mm-hmm. Not only that, i walk up on you and buy your car from you right then, cash. How much you want for it? Little homie, go get that little pocket change. I want this car right now. I was going to ask, so what about your grass, Rose? When all those cars are on your grass and they start pulling off, what are you going to do about the grass? I ain't worried about that. We got 400 acres. <laughs> <laughs> now, where do you put the buffalo during this time? Yeah, where oh, do the, the animals go? Oh, all the animals, they got their own section. I got my own zoo. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Side. But Rose blew the horn on me. Rose did a video where he blew the horn. I was going to call animal control and be like, <laughs> yeah. he's messing up, though. The animals are being disturbed right now. <laughs> Yo, no, they, they so, they yeah, so, so far on the other side. Yeah. We, we, you got to take care animals? of animals. What do you do with the buffalo? Like, what we does the buffalo the, do? Oh, man, he just comes, he let me <laughs> pet him, and I feed him apples, man. You should see the buffalo eyes when he bite into the green apples, man. Like, what do you do with the horses and all? Like, they all love each other. It ain't nothing but love at the promised land. <laughs> the are animals, any of them, these the animals, animals dangerous? Are, no, they not. They really beautiful. Goodness gracious. It's great. a beautiful thing. All right, we got more with Rick Ross when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking in with Rick Ross. Now let's talk music before we get back to the car show. Now, Too easy. Then when are we doing another album? What, what, what's up with Rose and, and music? I'm back in the lab right now, before the year out. What inspires Rose musically? Dreaming big. Mm-hmm. One of the conversations I was actually having with my partner Brett, and that's what I when I was in Africa. That's what I was talking about. I was like, wow, this is powerful. Let's do more. You have MMG Africa coming. Yeah, that's coming this year. Mm -hmm. I'm signing two artists from Africa. Okay. And so you were really inspired when you went to, um, where you, Nigeria? Yeah, I went to Nigeria. I went to Angola, Abuja, Mm -hmm. a few different spots. And I actually had a day off and it was Easter. I let my homie, I told my personal homie, my my personal uh, guy, Abdul, I wanted to go down to to the streets, to the slums. And that's what we did. The, the, the cops told to us, people. yeah, the cops told us we not going there. And I said, that's fine. And we went down there and we just showed love. And it wasn't even about the money. It's just when, you know, somebody tell you what it means, you, you just want to feed as many people as you can. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I understand it's bigger ways to do it, but I want to touch the people right here and see their face. Mm-hmm. And then I let the, uh, I, I just sent that message out that I wanted to meet the president. And in and, and no way am I interested in politics. I just want to know what can I help and do for these people right here? Did you get a chance to meet with him? No, nah, not yet. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask with music. I know you and Meek wasn't seeing eye to eye at one time. How's your relationship now? Man, you already know, man. It's, let's stick to the business, man. Let's get to the money. 
That's what it's always been about. You always feel like in this industry, it's hard to have friends when you're in business because sometimes it always gets a little cloudy sometimes. I'm not going to say that because I got, you know, real hitters, man. You know what I'm saying? One time for Gunplay Murdoch. You know, it's a lot of dudes that the love is is really thick. And a lot of times we do have to find our, our own ways because I was that artist before. Mm -hmm. When I was young and ain't know really what was going on. And, you know, once I, I worked my way out of a lot of different situations and look back at them, I went back to the Slip and Slide CEO, Ted Lucas, and well, I appreciate that investment you mm -hmm. made in me. I recognize right now, you see? But back then you didn't, but when you grew yeah, 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 you, yeah, you yeah, figured yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I now understand what it was. I f kinda like when, you, when, when when your dad do something to you, you don't Yeah, yeah, it's just like being a young and teenager when you, when in you the get room. To that yeah, age, yeah. You be like, now yeah, yeah. I get why my dad did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have a, a show coming about wealth, so tell me about that, because I saw you post about it, and we didn't have too many details. I'm going to be honest. I posted about it because I had the whole film crew there, and I couldn't even get along with the people for two days. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so I said, we ain't doing it no more. Damn, that was quick. <laughs> yeah. That was fast. So yeah. what is, what is my it? Life, what my hell life, happened? No, it, it's like my the way I move is too real for like a reality show, or even, even if you warn the people. It's like... I would have to be in control of everything. That's what I think it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, recently I seen you bought your, your daughter a brand new Lambo, a Lamborghini truck. Right. Now, do you ever fear that giving her something that big will spoil her too much and she's not appreciative or grateful? Or Well, how big is it? Lamborghini truck is big. It's a $300,000 car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's big. Uh, pandemic, that it's big. probably 30000 over, but oh. I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to be honest, man. When you're on the team with Rose, you loyal to Rose, you deserve the finest. And she's a real one. You know, as you can see, she's about her business. You know what I mean? She don't really get into the small talk. And I respect and love her. So she deserves it. Now, back to MMG. Who are the artists on MMG as of right now? Of I, I know it's not Amarion anymore. I see you, you no, 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 no. It wasn't even it wasn't even about a shot. It was just most definitely, you know, we've moved on and, and moved apart. We still uh Meek Wale, you know, one time for Wale, we was on the phone yesterday. Mm -hmm. We finna get ready and drop a slapper for the summer for no reason, gunplay Murdoch for life. And then I got some underground artists that I'm really just taking my time with. What about cryptocurrency? As a person who is an investor and somebody who's savvy business wise, and I did see you at a conference right. in Miami, have you gotten into that? You still gotta convince me. Mm -hmm. Because I love to touch it. I love real estate because I could touch it. You Don't understand? You like me? Yeah, that's exactly what you, 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 you could touch it. I said the same a car, thing. A car company can make another car, but that corner, you got to come by this corner. So the crypto, the metaverse, uh, you you got to touch this book. If we're going to release books in the metaverse and <laughs> poof. They have book clubs in the metaverse. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody tried to get you to do a... Uh, uh, anything in the metaverse because your mansion in the metaverse would be crazy you know I've heard that setting up the promised land in the metaverse you could rent a room in the metaverse <laughs> you know you still got a lot of convincing to do <laughs> I'm with you, man. to yeah, the I, big I boss you. Ricky Rose <laughs> I understand you yeah. know it's a lot of hustlers that's gonna roll the dice <laughs> I roll the dice every blue moon too but if we gonna be 1000 and stand on it you got a lot of convincing have you used the that. Oculus and gone in the metaverse yet to of see course what it's not. like of course not <laughs> I think you need to do it. You know why else I think you might? Well, hey, because hey. people, I think it started off as a lot of people using that like for porn. You know, people were doing like virtual reality. All right, never mind. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> You you in the porn? You like porn a lot? Well, I Here just we go, know that. Yeah, you go, yeah, go. No, no, no. It's just you know it's, it's been a lot of sexual talk going on. Correct. A lot of sexual talk Correct. going on, and and I get back to you on the porn. I got a question for you. Ask uh -oh. me. Oh God! Here Ask we go. Me. Ask him. I, I love I, this. I got a question for Let you. Let me get some chips. There's been some fake orgasms going on. <laughs> that is true. Facts. <laughs> I missed that interview. Just fill me in. Okay. Just 30 seconds. Right. What was that about? For saying. everybody who just seeing headlines <laughs> like Rose, just landed from Africa. <laughs> yeah. Woke up to the headlines. Got you. I missed everything. Got you. Got you. Got just, you. Got you. Just, <laughs> even if it's just 30 seconds, got you. fill we me your in side. on Easy. the fake orgasms. Right. Me and my wife been together since 16, 15 years old. High school sweethearts. Okay. I was her first. She was my first. Okay. We've been together 27 years. Too much years. backstory. Get to okay. married 20. Okay. So when we first started having sex, intercourse, I could not make an orgasm. Reason being is I would watch porn, and the first thing you think of a porn is you go, 
And that's what I thought was being a man. And we had to have a conversation and she was basically like, no, that doesn't make me have an orgasm. Ten years later. Ten years later, honestly. But we're not just, you know, not through intercourse, through, you know, oral, absolutely. But intercourse, no. So then when we had a conversation and we talked about it and we talked about foreplay and all the things that a man's supposed to do, we were fine. The reason we, we wrote a book and we talk about it in the book, <laughs> because there's a lot of people that go through it and don't necessarily understand and scared to have conversations. Ooh. So after we wrote the book, I would tell you my DMs and my wife DMs, there's so many women talking about, I'm glad y'all talk about it. I'm gonna have a conversation with my man tonight. I'm gonna have a conversation with my husband tonight. But that's that's why we wrote the book and we talk about it in the book. That's what the book is for. And she's she's happy. She's happy, absolutely. She's happy. Absolutely. Yeah, 10 years of faking. Then, you know, I, had to, I had to work and figure out what's gonna please my wife. Do so you think anybody ever faked it with you, Ross? I'm gonna tell you this. I, I can't tell you what somebody did, but when I'm Rose in his zone, you can't fake that mess they make for Rose. <laughs> <laughs> that splash. <laughs> you thought the fire, the fire alarm came on the way that splash come out. So if you could fake that, <laughs> you a hell of a. <laughs> Stupid man. You feel me? Stupid. You can't fake that. And Rose, that's what I look forward to. <laughs> 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 He's stupid, you feel me? He's stupid, man. Hey, He's stupid, that. man. You feel me? So, give that so, gear. So, He's look, stupid. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Have you faked the orgasm? Uh, no, I've never faked it, but I will not always orgasm. So, I, I never pretended I was, but I've, I will tell you if I didn't. But a woman cannot <laughs> have an orgasm every single time and it can still be good, but it's harder for us. So maybe like 70% of the time it happens, 30% it might not. Because y'all sometimes finish too fast. Okay, so I have another question you won't mind me asking. Go ahead. You don't mind? No, I'm a lip okay. service person, so. Okay, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> but uh, are you a s***? No. You're not? Mm-mm. I've never seen good thing or a bad thing? Um, I guess guys like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some people think it's really messy. Sometimes women yeah. get a little embarrassed because it can be really, you know, all over the place. Like, do you change the sheets every time uh, women Change those sheets. Every, every time. time. <laughs> can you go to sleep in it or you have to do it right away? You could doze off. <laughs> After you enjoy that bottle of blue, that <laughs> bottle of, that bottle of pink, you could most definitely doze off. What but if you it's in your beard? You have to get up and wash it out right away, or I don't know. You might you you that, that sounded the way you said it. That that sounded like a good thing, but you may want to freshen up. You know, right? That's a good thing, <laughs> but you do want that, <laughs> <laughs> and wherever that goes, at you could take that. Okay, you could take that. We'll take notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, don't move. We got more with Rick Ross when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're still kicking in with Rick Ross. Yee? You know what I always wanted to ask you, too? Oh, boy. You always wanted to ask. Always wanted well, to ask. Well, not always, but Lip recently. Service. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. What happened on the 85 South show where you just got up and left? Oh, yeah. That... <laughs> I think I was just really in the zone. I was smoked out good. I was in the zone. <laughs> when I'm in the zone and get one of them money calls, I just uh, ease out that month. You I just left. He got out like he's in a club. Yeah. And he got out the yeah. back door. Yeah. Like, I was like, did they do something? Yeah, yeah. I, I got two I'm a, shows to do And I'm gonna be honest. When I found out about it, it was it was already everywhere online. I ain't even realize it. <laughs> you went to the bathroom. Was left. I went to the bathroom. Was on the phone. <laughs> smoke one and. You go outside and you just leave. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I, like, I just forgot left. what I was just doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Them, them my little homies too. <laughs> and you know what I was like, like it. No, no, nah, them my little homies and it was a cool interview. Um, Now, have you ever faked an orgasm? Nah, I ain't gonna fake no orgasm. Baby, if you don't make me enjoy myself, I'm not gonna fake no orgasm to please you now. So you'll just stop? Oh, yeah. If it ain't, this ain't right. <laughs> Just leave. Yeah, this ain't right. The same way I did that interview. The <laughs> same way I did that interview, yeah. You I'll be go right back. Yeah, I go in the bathroom, flush that condom, <laughs> and you hear that door slam. Gloof. <laughs> Let's get back to the car show. Car okay, show yeah, <laughs> May twenty first. May twenty first. Now, Fred. May twenty first. Freddie. Now, how many Hold cars? On. This do you the buy? this the this the this the Dade County legend, Freddie. For everybody Absolutely. that don't know, okay. we you know this the Dade County legend. I was hearing about him building cars 
many, many years before I got my paper all the way right, mm -hmm. homie done built classics. You know Absolutely. what I mean? I'm talking about he was the only one really with six fours in the hood, in Dade County, in Carroll City. It was others, but Dog was really doing it in. I yeah. just want to make yeah, sure yeah. he get that proper introduction. Absolutely. I'm, I, I'm sending him one of my cars. My car should be there next week. But talk about Ross's love for cars and how many cars he buys all the time and where his cars are from Houston to Atlanta to Miami to Mississippi and all his cars. Talk about some of his, Ross's love for cars. It's, it's funny, right? Because um, he's like, like a grown kid when it comes to cars. Oh, Lord. He really, really enjoys the <laughs> He just bought an army truck. Wow. When we was kids, there was a show called MacGyver. I remember. <laughs> White guy loved him. This was his tank. It's called a pig. It's not a van. This is a real tank. What is your monthly bills on maintenance and car cleaning on oh. those cars? Oof. What what is that? What is that that bill? He don't know, <laughs> he but don't I know. know. He don't know, oh, but you know. Maybe you should build a car wash oh, on the property. Yeah. We got something yeah. like that. Yeah. We most definitely finna build our own huge museum. Well, we could do our own everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, he got warehouses with. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We built shops. Uh, we got tons of lifts in there. I mean, it's just a full. So like some of the cars that he has, right? You know, he, he's not know driving. No. Like the NASCAR, the tank no, truck, the fire truck. <laughs> you can't drive it on the street. Of course not. Well, well he drive. He got enough space to well, ride on the private side. Man, we gonna buy a racetrack. <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy, man. I don't know, his car show might be better than yours. Come on, of course. Uh, Watch him now. Uh, of course it is. It's only two different May 21st, <laughs> the Rick Ross <laughs> car show, of course, is crushing deep day in Beach car <laughs> show. No. It is. Mine is July 8th in Atlanta. That's right. Ross is That's the right. And, and I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm shipping a, my cars I'm, to Ross. Yeah, and I'm shipping my cars to you. Yeah, I'm That's my what the real ones do. I feel like it's two different audiences for you guys, too. It don't matter. Car no, show, you'll be surprised. It's a, well, I mean, it's uh, courses, but I feel like, um, you know, for Envy's, it's going to be like a kid's. You know. Oh, you're the kids. Yeah. We the big boys. That's right. That's right. She's a genius. But my show is, is more it's, it's for family. I got six kids, yeah, so I like okay. to bring my kids to the show. Uh, so they go on the rides and all uh, that. Maybe we'll get some of the rose uh, and chips. Yeah, get some of the rose and chips. My, mine is for family. But this, you know, $750, this is for people who really are into cars and nothing right. but cars and really looking for mm -hmm. possibly buying cars and selling right. cars. So. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like two different types of events. Right. It's right. most definitely two different type of vibes, but at the same time, it's ultimately for the core of the car lovers. Mm -hmm. So how can people register if they want to register right now? www.rickrosscarshow.com. I'd love right, to well, see it. We will be down there the 21st of May. And uh, make sure you register. Go on the website right now. Put right your now. car in. Or if you just want to be a spectator, or if you want to be media, or if you want to be a sponsor, a vendor, or a food truck, they have those as well. No, food truck sold out, right? Yeah, sold out. Food yeah, we got out. 15 food trucks, so it's going to be something like a fair. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to eat, drink, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just enjoy yourself on, on some real good positive vibes and look at the whips. It's going to be cars for sale, bikes for sale. And you're going to just get to see the work of some of the greatest homies from all around the world. And like I say, Homies is on their A game. Mm -hmm. My car's in the shop right now, so they will be there. I'm yeah, get them Knicks. Get I'm, them Knicks out the car. I'm bringing now. six now. Yeah. I'm bringing my E30. Which I'm cars? bringing my Lexus Coupe. Okay. I'm bringing my, my, my 55 pickup. And then I'm going to bring Lexus. I'm going to bring my Ford GT. You know, the Lexus Coupe, the old Lexus Coupe. I like that C400. That C400. One day I'm going to get a oh, car worthy of the being bubble. in a car bubble. show. I got, a, I, got a old bubble. I got a bubble I'm bringing. Oh, you liked it then? That, that's, my, that's my era. 88, 89, 90s. That's my era. I'm bringing that. And then I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring some new, some new toys. That I'm Do you sure. got some classics you gonna bring? Come on now, I got some classics. I got, I got a, a nice classic. You can't just bring, bring the that they could still find in the auto trader. I trader. got a 55 pickup. I'm gonna bring 55 pickup. What size motor in there? You see. You don't know. Uh, you gotta I fix it up know. now. You, you gotta know. jazz it up. You don't know. You don't know, you don't know cause do know. I'm gonna hold you to it. No, I do know. <laughs> you don't know. I show, I show you a picture. You, you, know. Know. you know the picture, but you don't know the size. Four fifty four. He gonna know that he gonna know yeah, this. He gonna know if it's a okay. Can you okay. change a tire? Me? No, I don't. No, I was tires. asking Ross. Oh. I know you can't. Change a tire on the car? Yeah, that's I'm too easy. Curious. You can because Envy can't change a tire. That's so. too easy. Mm -hmm. Envy, you know how to change the oil on your car, don't you? Nope. You don't. You? Of course. <laughs> I still cut my grass. I cut down trees. Don't cut your goddamn grass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I he don't. Does. He does. He does. He I does. don't. Well, you cut. You drive the machine. Yes, he yes, does. He does. He does. It's it's show video of it. I've seen. I've seen him, but I don't believe. Nah. You, know, you don't believe. Nah, he cuts his grass. I'm coming out. I want to see you nah. cut the grass. I'm, I want to see you cut the grass. Next time, I want to see. I'm, I'm Yo, I understand what we doing is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Is well, there a car y'all can't find anywhere that you want to get your hands on? Mm, we find it. It is. Yeah. It is. It was actually one that Jay Leno showed me. The joint with the one seat. The McLaren. Yeah. The F1. Yeah, the, the F1. F1. Yeah, the yeah. seat in the you know, you know, Wyclef owned one of those and bought it for like nothing and then sold it and then it shot up to worth. Now it's worth like 20 million. Yeah. I was going to say his, he told me at the time, was worth 17, yeah, 17. million. That's one that's been on my mind. My I ain't ready for it yet. Not right. you. Not well, you. it's Rick Ross. It's Freddie. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We the biggest. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. Well, Megan Thee Stallion, her interview with Gail King, a CBS morning special, is out today, by the way. And the trailer was running all weekend. And here is Megan Thee Stallion talking about getting shot. It was an argument because I was ready to go and everybody else wasn't ready to go. Mm-hmm. But I never put my hands on anybody. And all I hear is this man screaming. Is, he said, dance, bitch. And he started shooting. Like, he shot a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And I, I so was so scared. So is he in the car shooting from the car, Megan? He now, is he... standing up over the window okay. shooting. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even want to move because I'm like, oh, my God, if I take the wrong step, I don't know if he can shoot something that's, like, super important. I don't know if he could shoot me and kill me. Like, Were you afraid for your life at that time? I was really scared because I had never been shot at before. All right. Well, Tory Lanez is being charged with one count of assault with a semi-automatic firearm in a manner that personally inflicted great bodily harm and one count of carrying a concealed, loaded and unregistered firearm in a vehicle. And an official court date is set for September this year. I thought they couldn't talk about the case. No, he can't. She's the victim. Tory can't. And he's the one that's being charged. Gotcha. So she, he, he can't, yeah, reference it or her or anything. Okay. All right. I, hey, listen, I love I love Gail King, but when you're sitting with Gail King, it always feels like uh, you're on the defensive. <laughs> in this case, Megan Megan isn't on the defensive, right? No. She's I guess yeah. telling the story because she has she's never really gone into depth. She hasn't done any interviews about it, so this is the first time that she's done that. That's out this morning, so I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are going to wait. I saw a lot of people in the comments as well. Yeah, because even even though Gail sits with a lot of people, when you sit when you think of Gail, you think R. Kelly, you think the Jesse Smollett situation. So it just always feels like when you sit with Gail, you're the one that's trying to convince people, if that makes sense. And the real thing is, we don't know what happened yet. We don't know his full side. It's this is going to be our first time hearing her full side. A lot of people are weighing in with their opinions. We just don't know. And soon enough, I guess we'll hear yeah. both sides of the story. All right. And it really won't matter until everything's laid out in the court of law. That's, that's when all the facts will be out. Like, now it's just everybody's opinion on the situation. But in the court of law, it's all facts that we got to deal with. All right, now, Oprah and Viola, a Netflix special event. Viola Davis, man, when I tell you, we just got a copy of her book today, Finding Me. And I cannot wait to read this book just based off of all the interviews and things that she said. Mm-hmm. But one thing that she talked about when she sat down with Oprah was her hygiene as a child and... Uh, just how shameful that can be when you don't have the means to even be able to buy soap at times to clean yourself. We were both cold Mm -hmm. because we smelled really bad that day. Mm -hmm. Could you smell yourself? Did you know you smelled? Yeah. You did. I didn't know (laughs) what to do about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have any hot water. A lot of times we didn't have any soap. A lot of times we didn't even have any clean clothes. People don't realize that if no one shows you then you have to figure it out on your own. And I didn't have the tools to figure it, figure it out mm-hmm. on my own. Yeah. And then I was ashamed that I didn't have the tools to figure it out on my own. So then all I had, all I could do was swim in the shame. Man, that's crazy. And she's from South that's Carolina. A fact. You already know. That's a fact. A lot of people came to school musty back in the day. Didn't know it. Yeah. Well, no, she said she knew she just didn't have the means. That's why the job of a teacher I'd is be wondering so in- that, though. important because, you know, I went to school. I thought I was going to be a teacher in education. And I remember there was one student that would come to school. He always had the same clothes on. He didn't smell too fresh, but he had a lot of older brothers and sisters. He had hand-me-downs. A lot of times a coat would be dirty. He d- couldn't even eat. Mm. And other kids make fun yeah, of him I'm- for that. And you don't know what somebody's situation is at home. That's true. And what they're going through. That is true.
Mm-hmm. That's right. Some, some things are just poor hygiene. Some things are actual poverty. So you just never know. All right. So she talked about how she did grow up and how difficult it was for her without having gas or electricity at times. We knew we were poor. Yeah. There's no, you know, the plaster coming off the walls and um, always being hungry. In this Rhode no Island, in cold Rhode Island. Freezing, plumbing never working. You know, you have to fill the bucket of water to put in the toilet to flush it. Never having a phone and um, wetting the bed was mm. a serious bedwetter. You were a bedwetter till you were 14. 14. And one of our first apartments infested with rats. And I mean, at night, you had to put your hands over your ears so you couldn't hear them eating the pigeons on the roof at night oh, wow. and, and listening to them eat your toys at night and jump on top of you in the bed. Wow. What kind of rats eat pigeons? Rats eat pigeons? Listen, I don't know if you've seen some of these rats, rats out here. But... <laughs> I, I, I ain't know. Rats eat pigeons? Just cannibal rats? New York rats are different, but that wasn't in New York, was it? No, I think that she wasn't just New said, York. She just said Rhode Island. Yeah, New York. I mean, maybe Rhode Island rats are different. I know New York rats is, is different, different. Man, I'm going to tell you something. If there's rats in your house that eat pigeons, they can have a house. Okay? Like, here, take it. Y'all, I'm leaving. <laughs> what? You saw, can you imagine no. seeing a rat eat a pigeon? I mean, I've seen rats. Man, come I on, seen man. rats carry pizza slices. I've seen rats do a bunch of different things. I ain't never seen me no pigeon. Rats will, yeah, with a pigeon? Rats will eat anything, too. Like, any type of uh, caucus of a, you know, any type of animal, they'll feed on that. No, she ain't say caucus. She said pigeon, like the pigeon was alive. Like, I've, I've never seen that. I've never seen a predatory rat. I'm not saying that they can't do it. I've just never seen it. Lord have mercy. All right, well, that is your rumor report. I'm trying to think. What are you trying to think Because usually rats are scared if they see something like the rats dip off. No, they don't. I've never seen that. Listen, some rats, rats are very bold. Pigeons? Rats chased you before you? That means the rats had to get on the roof. I don't know if you've seen well, some of them. anywhere. Just Google some New York City subway rats and you'll see. Yeah, New York rats. Are just yeah, but I've never seen a rat eating an animal. Y'all seen a rat eating an animal? A carcass, but of a dead animal. But look, the, actually, the first thing, if you put rats eating pigeons, that pops up. Rat attacks a pigeon in Brooklyn. There's a whole <laughs> video Brooklyn, of it. Them Brooklyn rats are different, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's, well, I promise Look, there's you, a whole bunch ever, of videos uh, of rats uh, eating pigeons if you Google it. Wow. Moment rat is Damn, attacking uh, and killing a pigeon. Where they are located? New York? Yeah. Well, we didn't know this 30 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> York, thank, 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 well, now we thank, found out something new. Well, Charlamagne, who you Thank you, Viola to? Davis, for educating us. Uh, four after the hour. Man, we need to talk about this brother name. Uh, what's his brother name? Jeremy David Hanson of Rossmore, California. Uh, he's going to jail because of they. We'll discuss four after the hour. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. What up, y'all? It's DJ MV. Make the switch to the General Insurance, and you could save over $500 on your car insurance. Imagine what you could do with that money, right? Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Don't be out here acting like a donkey. Hee-haw, bitch. Hee-haw. It's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> I'm a big boy. I can take it. If he feel I deserve it, ain't no big deal. I know Charlamagne guy going to have some funny sweet <laughs> say out his mouth. Just because I say something you may not agree with doesn't mean I'm mean. Who's getting that donkey? That donkey. That don't, 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 don't. Donkey of the Day right there. <laughs> the, the Breakfast Club, bitches. You can call me the Donkey of the Day, but, like, I mean no harm. Yeah, stock here today for Monday, April 25th, goes to 34-year-old Jeremy David Hansen of Rossmore, California. And it's a reminder on this fine Monday to mind your damn business. Okay, some things just not your business, so mind yours. All right? Now, Jeremy David Hansen uh, identifies as a he. Well, his pronoun is he, and he identifies as fed the F up. Now, David's only 34, but he doesn't understand the language of this new world we are all navigating. Uh, If you grew up in a world full of he and she, him and her, and that's all you know, well, according to some, you don't know much. Okay? Is some a pronoun? I believe so. Uh, Who identifies as some? I don't know. And that's the pickle. That's the conundrum so many of us find ourselves in. Don't say he, don't say she, don't say him, don't say her, just say they, don't say gay. In the case of Envy and I, don't play gay. It's all too much, okay? And it clearly got to be too much, okay, for Jeremy Hansen. But I have a rule. 
Anything that costs me my peace is too expensive, and Jeremy is about to pay a hell of a price, all because he is letting they and, dis- and them disturb his peace, and he's disturbing they and them's peace. And trust me when I tell you, this is a situation that should be identified as not that serious. But some people are taking this war on words seriously because they look at it as more than just the war on words. They look at it as anti-science propaganda, and they believe it is part of the left's efforts to corrupt and degrade the English language and deny reality. What a blessing it is for this to be your issue. Okay, with all the things some of us are dealing with on a daily basis, if I could wake up and my biggest issue is being upset that folks are using other pronouns to define themselves, that would be amazing. Okay, but for Jeremy, it's too much to bear. So much so that he decided to take his war with words all the way to the top. Oh, yes, baby. When you have beef with words and how people use them, it's only one entity to press. And that would be Merriam Webster for 300, Alex. Let's go to CBS Boston for the report, please. California man has been charged with making threats against a Massachusetts book publisher. Jeremy Hansen was arrested for threatening violence against Springfield-based Merriam Webster. Hansen is accused of targeting the dictionary maker over the word entries for girl and woman. Investigators say the 34-year-old's threats related to the LGBTQ community. Merriam Webster shut down offices in Springfield and New York City for five days. Jeremy Hansen decided he wanted to uh, wage a terrorist attack against Merriam Webster's headquarters. The dictionary. He said Merriam Webster's headquarters should be shot up and bombed, all because he doesn't like their use of pronouns. And now he's facing five years in federal prison. If you think for one second that I'm about to identify as an inmate for the next five years because he, she, we, her, him, they, and them are trying to figure out their pronouns, then you are bugging. Okay? This is why it's best to identify as minding your business and your pronouns should be none and yeah. Because this is absolutely nothing to lose your freedom over. Like seriously, do me a favor. Just think to yourself that you could be facing five years in prison all because you won't allow them to be called what they want to be called. I don't care what they want to be called, especially if it's going to lead to me being called a donkey, all because I can't mind the business that pays me. Okay? and I'm all up in them business. Look, man, it's hard enough trying to stay out of prison nowadays, especially in this era where everyone can say something slick to you via social media, broadband blooding, cyber crypting from the safety of their own computers, not knowing that you identify as a thug and your pronouns are try and me, and you just wish your mother effer would. You not letting them trick you off the street, though. So why would I allow I, as in me, to trick myself off the street by minding they business. I, you, he, she, it, we, they, them, us, him, her, his, her, it's, there, are, you, A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes why I don't care what you want to be called that much that it's going to all make me take a penitentiary chance and end up identifying as somebody's boyfriend just because I don't like your pronouns. Please give Jeremy David Hansen the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons, please. Oh, now you are the donkey of the day. You are the donkey of the day. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey today, sir. I, I don't get it. Okay. Let they business be them business. Let they have them business. You know what I'm trying to say. Nope. Okay. Stop right. minding their business. Stop. Right. Yeah, there you go. Stop minding their business. There you go. Stop minding them business. <laughs> All right. Let they have it. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Now, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Now, Amir Khan, boxer, he was robbed at gunpoint in London last week. And people are talking about it, not because he was robbed. That happens every day, B. But... He got robbed at gunpoint, and people are talking about his wife, who was with him, who ran away from him. She fled the scene. She fled the scene. She sure did. And people were getting at her for running. And she even had to uh, talk about it on her uh, social media to explain what happened. You you don't know how it feels being in a situation like that. You've never been in it, and I pray you never are in it. And I'll say one thing. No one's a gangster when there's a gun put to your head. No one. 
I can't get in front of a mirror and get shot. This is in Romeo and Juliet. Um, the, at that time, the best thing for me to do is think of my family, I have three children, and run and get help. All right, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Ladies, you with your husband, you with your man, somebody tries to rob y'all. You running or you staying? And fellas, what do you expect your woman to do? Let's talk about it. 800-585-1051. Yeah, because he was happy that she ran. He want, he would want her to have runoff. Right. I, I mean, we'll talk about it when we come back, all right? Yee, would you have ran? No. But I think I also would have... I, I don't think my instinct would have You don't know what you would have done. Not, I've been... Yeah, I've, know what you, no. I've been around people a couple of times where they were getting robbed at gunpoint, and I didn't run. <laughs> she, she has. Yeah, so well, I've we'll been talk, in that situation. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Amir Khan. He's a boxer. He was out in London last week, and uh, he was robbed of his watch. He was with his wife. They were coming out of a restaurant. Robbed at gunpoint. Robbed at gunpoint. And as they were getting robbed, his wife took off and ran, and people are trolling and getting on his wife for running and uh, she spoke about it. This is what she actually said. You, know, you don't know how it feels being in a situation like that. You've never been in it and I pray you never are in it. And I'll say one thing. No one's a gangster when there's a gun put to your head. No one. I can't get in front of a mirror and get shot. This is in Romeo and Juliet. Um, the, at that time, the best thing for me to do is think of my family. I have three children and run and get help. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Ladies, what do you do? And fellas, what do you expect your, your wife or your, your girl or your woman to do? Now, Yee, what would you do in that situation? I wouldn't run. I would stay. And I've been in that situation before, more than once. Mm -hmm. And I never ran from that situation. I think I couldn't live with myself if something happened to the person. I understand it were two guns pointed. And Amir Khan said that he wanted her to run. And, you know, she thought that the best thing for her to do was to think of the family, try to go and get help. Uh, one situation I was in, one of the other people that was with us ran. He said he was running to get help, but I just wanted to make sure. Every, I, I mean, there was nothing I could really do about it, but I didn't so, run. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. Simple question: Stay and do what? I mean, just some, you know, just I feel like if you're For there, moral support. If God forbid something happens, maybe there's some way you could help. Who knows? But I would feel bad if I left my man. While he was getting robbed at gunpoint. Yeah, my wife, my wife ain't running. We've been in situations like this. I had situations where somebody tried to rob me at gunpoint, and and I had some dudes run that were with me. But my wife is not leaving. She ain't leaving. If something's gonna happen, if we all get robbed, we all getting robbed. But she's not gonna leave me there to deal with it by myself and her run and take off. That's just the way my wife is built. That's just the way we are. I would want her to run though. I would want her to get the f out of Dodge. I would want her to leave. I would want all that smoke and all that problem with me. If something happens, I would rather it just be me. But my wife wouldn't run. She wouldn't leave. Charlamagne, what so, about, what so about what's you? the question? Uh -oh. What's the question again? Well, we're asking women would they run, and we're asking fellas what would you want your woman to do? Yeah, because a lot of people were weighing in and criticizing her for running, and she was explaining why she I, ran. Um, I, I wouldn't expect anything except for one of these three options because there is only three options. It's either fight, flight, or freeze. Those are all automatic responses to a physical reaction to an event that is perceived as stressful or frightening. One of those three things is going to happen. Either the person is going to fight, either the person is going to run, or the person is going to freeze. So I know one of those three things are going to happen. And I don't think I would hold my wife. I wouldn't. I don't think I would hold her accountable for anything that she did in that situation. Anything she did in that situation was, is the reaction that I would expect. Because it's the same thing for me, too. One of those three things going to happen. I'm either going to fight, I'm either going to freeze, or I'm going to run. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I've had it happened to me before, and I fight. It's stupid, it's dumb, and I hate the fact that I even did fight back. I, I, I mean, I actually caught the guy and held him until the police came, but I'm just, you know, I, I tell my kids all the time, and my wife tells me all the time, if something, even my dad, who's a retired police officer, if somebody has a gun on you, give it up. It ain't worth it. But it's your instinct is not to it. Your instinct is, I work hard for this. Your instinct is, you're not. Well, no, no, no. It, that's, it, it's, no, it's three of them. It's fight. Flight or freeze. Well, that was your instinct in that moment. Yeah, but you, you've had moments where you've gotten the hell out of Dodge, too. <laughs> you, we, we've heard those conversations on the radio. Not when you know what I mean? So it's either fight. Not when they had me at gunpoint. What you mean? You said you got shot at and you bounced. 
but I was in the car. I wasn't gonna get out and be like, hey, come on, he, you missed, try again. I was in the car. Hey, do, do, do some people might go after them with the car and start shooting back at them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like fight, flight, or oh, freeze are the three options. Man. Well, let's go to the phone line. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Mika. Good morning. Mika, good, good morning. morning. Talk to us, Mika. Okay, so I do want to say this before I start. Angela Yee says, you don't have any kids. If your husband can't keep you safe, I'm sure he's going to want you to run because somebody has to take care of your baby. So I don't agree with you there. I am not a thug. I'm from Queens, but I am not a thug. Mm -hmm. You run to make sure that somebody is there to protect your baby. That's it. That's it. That's I mean, it. I'm not Thank saying you, that he shouldn't have wanted her to run. I'm just telling you what happened in real life when it happened to me. You sure you didn't freeze you? No, I didn't. I was standing there watching the whole thing. I wasn't frozen. Yeah, so you made a conscious decision. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, I made a conscious decision. Hold it down. As a matter of fact, my other friend that was with me, she had my purse and she kept walking. He actually I could have right. just kept walking with her. He actually called me right after the event. But like, are you around this area? <laughs> Hello, who's this? <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on? It's Bree from Chester. Bree, what's up? Talk to us. Peace, Bree. Ain't nothing, man. One time I, I got robbed. I was with my uh, girlfriend at the time and a friend of mine. Some guys came up from around the side of the alley. They robbed us. But Well, my friend, he ran. The girl, she stood there. She was laughing. They robbed me. You just hear my friend running up the street talking about they robbing Bree. By the time they let me go, she walking up the street smiling, laughing. I hit the corner, everybody that was outside in the neighborhood, they just disappeared. So your girl was laughing while you was getting robbed? She, she, I don't but she talking about she probably yeah, was, was that's, No, she, man, that, that but that was, that was probably a nervous response. Like some people break out in uncontrollable laughter when they scared to death, when, well, when they feel you, uncomfortable. Well, sir, what was it? What do you feel like yes. it was? An, an, I'm asking him. She he was there. You know that one. You say, say that again. Was it a nervous response laughter? What was going on? Uh, I ain't sure. I guess she was nervous, but like, cause she goofy like that. She do just do dumb, but. Bro, it's an actual condition. It's called nervous lap laughter. It happens all the time. Like, like, like some people, yes, people use that to like regulate their emotion when they're scared, when they feel vulnerable, when they feel weak. That happens all the time. It's a defense mechanism. A pistol is on you. You go, ha, 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 ha. No way. Uh, yes. What are all you right. talking about? Some people do that. Yes. I'm not saying that is a normal thing, but some people do it. I'm, I'm going to tell you, if I'm a criminal and I'm not, and I pull out a gun on you to rob you, start laughing, you might get shot. I'm gonna let you, now you're going to laugh at me, you going to play me like, ha, 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 I've got to shoot you. Man, in the you, 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 never heard about, you never heard about people that laugh at funerals because it's, it's, it's such a stressful environment and it's such an uh, emotionally intense situation that they laugh because they're so uncomfortable and nervous? No. Oh, yeah, you, you need y'all need to read more then. <laughs> we're asking we're talking to mayor Khan. him and his wife were uh in london getting fooled when they walked out they got robbed his wife ran on him and people are trolling her saying she shouldn't have left we're asking what would you do is the breakfast hold on Avery, you never seen the joker y'all ain't never seen the joker movie yes i did see joker he had that, that he had a laughing disorder it was an actual technical term for it I, I, but I he remember. used to laugh whenever he was i do yes remember. but that was a movie that's, that's seen, real i've never seen it in person all right it does. It's called. I forgot what it's called. All right. Well, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know when I like it. That you know me with that. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, <laughs> Angela E, Charlamagne the guy. We are oh, the Breakfast man. Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking Amir Khan. Now, Amir Khan, you know, he was out with his wife at dinner. And uh, when they were walking to the car, somebody came and robbed him in London. His wife ran, and people were upset with his wife. They were trolling her. So we're asking 800 585 1051. What would you do in that situation? Hello, who's this? Yo, this is Brandon calling out of Virginia, man. Brandon out of Virginia. What's going on? What's going on, man? Hey, uh, Hey, Charlamagne, answer this question for me, man, because I feel kind of sketchy about this, man. Yes, sir. Uh, when when uh, Angela Yee said she going to stay there, how did Envy vouch for that, man? Was uh, Envy the one robbing her? Was I robbing her? What? Yeah. Envy robbed her? Because you know, you know, I, I called uh, call them uh, after it happened. Because she was in a situation where she was she was with somebody that got robbed, and she called me right after the situation. His father's a cop. I was like, do you, happened, so are you around? Do you know anybody just to let them know what happened? Oh, okay. I, I just felt kind of sketchy about that. You know, you know, light-skinned people funny, man. What? 
I'd have been tricked. You've been tricked by light skinned people. Light skinned people that wear Beijing, man. It's real iffy, man. I get it. I I, okay. I totally get it. You can't trust them. I can't trust them. I get what you're saying, brother. That's that's all you have, Brandon. Hey. Hey, look, come to Virginia so I can show your vehicle, man, for being illegally parked and being blind. <laughs> if, you read, if you read Envy's book, he has a lot of problems with the colorist statements that people make about him being beige. I mean, he said he's going to tow your car hey, look, for being illegally blonde. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote that one. He thought oh about my God. that one down. Shout out to everybody. Oh, this is man. Hello, who's this? Oh, uh, uh, I'm on the radio. Oh, this is uh, Arun from Slidell. What's up, brother? Good morning. Hey, how y'all doing? Um, I was uh, asking a question. On, uh, would you tell your wife to run? Yep. I would definitely tell her because I don't want her to be in that type of situation because I'm the put, I'm the man. Like, I don't want you to get hurt, you know? Do you think your wife would run? Oh, yeah. she. I, I don't <laughs> think so. I really don't think so because she, 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 the, she, the, uh, she, you know, she that person. Like, she wants, she ready to hit. Yeah, mm -hmm. my, stick, you my know? wife ain't running. She, she, she know how to shoot? She going to stand right there. Huh? She know how to use that hammer? She know how to use the hammer? Hell, I mean, heck no. She can't see good. So, but she'll still... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll, 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 bust, she'll bust first, you know. Okay. But she, she can't see okay. good. Okay. So she gonna shoot you by accident. Now, I, I'll stand right in front of her with a gun. She, she probably she probably missed. But yeah, well, goodness Whoa. gracious. Maybe she should run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe she should run. All right, thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm not. I'm run. not mad at what. I'm not mad if somebody decides to fight. I'm not mad if they decide to flight. I'm not mad if they freeze. It just those are just the three responses you're gonna get. I think any guy would want his woman to run though. Absolutely. I, I don't would. think any guy's gonna be like, yo, somebody puts a gun, stay here with me. But I know she ain't. I know she ain't gonna run. She gonna stay there. But right that's what there. you would. But you would want her. Yeah, to. I, I would all. want her to get the hell out of Dodge. Absolutely. And I and I tell any any couple oh, out there as well. Uh, it, it, it is smart, you know, if you do own a gun license, I, like I have a concealed license, uh, and my wife has one as well. We That's one thing we do together. We go to the range together. We both know how to shoot together just in case there's an incident or a situation or a problem. We can both be able to help and maybe defend ourselves together. So I tell that to every couple out there. Hey, and when we were talking earlier about the uh, the woman who laughed when she got the gun pulled on her, it's a, it's a condition called PBA. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the actual technical term, but it's when there's a lack or loss of voluntary control over emotional responses. Like, have you ever seen the Joker movie, the very popular Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix? That's what the Joker suffers from. And some people say Vice President Kamala Harris mm. suffers from that as well. Mm. Okay. All right, well, we got rumors on the way. Yes, and uh, let's talk about the baby. There's another incident, and we'll tell you how he responded to this incident of him fighting, I guess, his, his own artist or swinging on him. We'll tell you about what he had to say. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor, rumor. On The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Nah, 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 nah. All right, well, there's a newly surfaced video that allegedly shows the baby in a physical altercation with Wisdom. That's an artist that he has signed to him. The footage was filmed and shared by an Instagram user named Prince Mazzani, who confirmed that incident occurred uh, during Friday night's Spring Jam event in Columbus, South Carolina. So, I was Columbia. Columbia. Oh, Columbia. Sorry. Down Columbia. Says Columbus. Yes. Columbia, South Carolina. Now, hours after the fight went down, he, uh, the person who filmed it went to Instagram to shed a bit more light, and he shared a message that, uh, I don't condone violence. I just happened to be there when it happened. The baby had a solid reason. I'm not taking his side, but I see why he did what he did. I got the whole video, and I'm going to tell you why the baby did what he did. Share and tune in. And the baby posted, the N-words praying on me. Can't F with the people praying for me. And then he posted... The uh, Tyrese meme. No disrespect to my boy Tyrese, but damn, what more do you want from me? And he said, Emmers then took 30 million from me. Lie on me once a week. Want my fine ass BMs to hate me. Want me to lose fights. I don't start. What more do you want from me? So, not sure what happened, but that video uh, did go uh, viral. Yeah, I don't think that was just over that wisdom situation, though. Mm -hmm. That was over that uh, what Rolling Stone released last night. Yeah, Rolling yeah. Stone posted a video uh, where they actually uh, saying that uh, it cast doubt on the baby's self defense claim in that 2018 Walmart murder. So mm -hmm. Rolling Stone released that security footage of the baby when he killed a man in Walmart back in 2018. 
All right. Now, Coyle Ray has uh, more issues now. Benzino and Coyle Ray, and now 50 Cent is involved in this. Now, this all started because 50 Cent posted, now would be a good time to stop hating on Coyle Ray. I'm going to make her show up on your TV. Stop worrying about a first week. Work. And then GLG, Green Light Gang. Well... Uh, Coy Ray reposted that with some heart emojis, and she's excited to be able to be on the TV. Benzino did not like that. As you know, he's been engaged in a back and forth with 50 Cent. He said, you crossed the line with my kid, but that's okay. She'll have to live with the decision she made to go against her father to deal with the ops. Everyone who is a real person will recognize her disloyalty, and it will be her downfall. SMH, people who sell their souls always regret it. Then he goes on to say that 50 Cent is having issues with stars. He said, hey, rap man, a.k.a. 59, I appreciate you putting my koi on, but does she know you and stars ain't been seeing eye to eye lately? Well, I just got my hands on a federal lawsuit saying that the BMF trademark isn't yours and knew about it and never told me or stars. Big mistake, you dummy. And then he said he's going to let him marinate before he sticks a fork in him. We do know Meech's son is in the BMF story, right? <laughs> like he's an actor that's on... BMF show that 50 producers, right? We do know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Also, there, there there should be no permanent friends and enemies when it when it comes to business, right? Like, I mean, there's mad people that say Coyle Ray should be on television. There's mad people that say, you know, Coyle Ray should be in films. So if 50 can get her there, do you stop that? Did him and 50 have that kind of issue? Well, he can't. Where it was like beef like that? Well, he can't stop it, obviously. Coyle Ray said she's doing it. Oh, I know, but I'm saying, did him and Fifty have that kind of beef where they? He's like, I don't want my daughter doing business with him. Well, I, I don't the, remember them. They I didn't think, get physical or nothing like nah, that. Did I they? think the beef came from Eminem. You remember because Eminem was signed to Fifty. I don't think it got physical. Yeah. Oh, got you, yeah. got you, got you. But I do believe if Definitely they a lot of loyalty there. bump into each other, it probably will. And then everything that's just been happening as of late. Mm-hmm. Too. All right, now Fifty Cent did say the Snoop Dogg murder was the case series is no longer in production at Stars. And he wrote in a since deleted tweet. I give them the alley oop. They dropped the damn ball. Anyway, I hope Snoop tell his story, but he has since deleted that. So I don't know if they worked that out or what's happening. All right. Now, Kiki Palmer has called out a fan who filmed her without her consent. She said, no means no, even when it doesn't pertain to sex. I was at the bar the other day and this girl asked me three times for a picture. And I told her three times nicely that I did not want to take one with her. She still proceeded to film me against my will. I, if I went off on her, I would have been wrong. So I just nervously laughed while my privacy was invaded upon. And she said she is still upset about it. She said, I hate it that I smile, but that is my defense mechanism to laugh or joke in an uncomfortable situation, and it misleads people every time. Yeah, we just spoke about that, yep, too. that's why I brought it up. I mean, yeah, and Kiki's consistent about that. I mean, if you remember correctly, that's what she was upset with uh, Trey Songz about back in the day, right? Well, well what, what can you Trey do? Trey put her in a music video? Well, not that, but what can you do if you're at a bar and somebody takes a video of you, right? Is that kind of after, like a freedom after of you've speech or something me like three that? Three times, and I told you no. They do. People do it all yeah, the time, though. You know, and that's a violation of boundaries. I just I spoke about that on Friday during Donkey of the Day. That's a violation of boundaries, and people walk walk up to you with the phone and ask to take the picture, but all they don't the really care whether you say yes or no. Yeah, but <laughs> like they they're either already filming or already taking the picture. Like Kiki, she's in a, a public figure, but what can she do in that situation? Like you know, what I mean, you say no, don't take a picture. They do it anyway. You know, mm-hmm. it's just disrespectful. All right, now the director behind Rich and Shameless, Girls Gone Wild, Exposed, had a lot to say about Kim Kardashian and Kim Kardashian's friendship with the Girls Gone Wild creator, Joe Francis. I don't know if you guys have been watching, um, but the first episode of the new TNT True Crime Anthology series is about Joe Francis, and it shows uh, an 18-year-old woman named Janelle. She alleges that Joe Francis brutally raped her in the back of his tour bus outside of a nightclub in Chicago back on August 25th, 2006. He served her a ton of alcohol, she alleges, complimented her all night, soon invited her onto the bus. She expected to just flash the girls gone wild camera, but instead uh, a lot of other things happened. It escalated, and she alleges that he pounced on her. Well, here is what director Katinka uh, Blackford Newman has to say. She has some issues with Kim Kardashian defending Joe Francis and wearing a a free Joe Francis shirt and all of those things. We all know that Joe Francis has had a sleazy reputation for many, many years. But what you've uncovered in your documentary goes far beyond sleaze and into the realm of criminal activity. Yes, it has now transpired that he was a, a violent abuser and managed to just keep on getting away with it because of his charm. They were clearly completely drunk. They'd signed a form that gave away all of their rights. And so those images will be out there forever. 
Now, she says she wonders what the Kim Kardashian of 2022 would say to the Kim K of 2008 because she purports to be an advocate of women's rights and criminal justice and so on. And she said there was no integrity, a complete lack of integrity for her defending him the way that she did. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your rumor report. All right, thank you, Miss Yee. Now, uh, the People's Choice Mix is up next, 800-585-1051. And shout out to 105.3 The Beat. That's our home in Atlanta. And uh, we are announcing our car show, which is going to happen July 9th, Saturday, July 9th. So if you want to purchase tickets, tickets right now are 1999. Your favorite celebrity cars, jumpies, old school cars, exotic cars, uh, you name it. Of course, we do the NASCAR thing. It's a learning event and family fun. Kids five and under are free. So today, Atlanta, if you want to go to the car show, I know last year we had uh, 17,000 people. Everybody had a great time. Tickets today are 19. 19- 99. So shout to 105.3 to beat. Shout to Louis V. Mono and all that. Get your tickets now. Let's get to the mix. Let's go. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. I teamed up with Zyrtec for this allergy season reflection. Inhale and exhale. Spring is in full bloom, and pollen is still out there trying to stop our shine. Luckily, we got Zyrtec. Starts working at hour one and stays strong day after day. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Shout out again to everybody in LA. I was in LA for the uh, book tour at the LA Book Festival put on by the uh, LA Times, and we had a, such a great time, man. It, we had about, what, 10, 15,000 people out there just looking at different books from authors to just people that are just interested in books. We had a great time at that festival, and I just want to say thank you to the LA Times and also shout out to Big Boy. I, um, we ran into Big Boy and did an interview with Big Boy as well. So shout out to my L.A. family out there. Now, Charlamagne. Yes, indeed. What you did all this weekend. You're going to uh, be on Tamron Hall today, too, right? Yeah, I'm going to be at, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm going to be on Tamron Hall today. I know okay. on the East Coast is 10 o'clock. So I remember when y'all listening. filmed that. I did. Uh, I saw Gia later that evening. Yeah, we did uh, about a week ago. So mm-hmm. excited about that. We're doing Tamron Hall today as well. So if you haven't got the book, please go out and get it. I know it was sold out at a lot of Barnes & Nobles, which is a great thing. Uh, that people are going out and supporting. We just want to say we appreciate you. People are uh, getting the books, and it is sold out. You can still get it on Amazon. They're going to be restocking this week. But shout to everybody that went out there and went to different Barnes and Nobles to pick up the book. We just want to say thank you. We're humbled. We appreciate you guys. And hopefully what we've been hearing is that it is creating conversations and relationships, and that's all we wanted. Hey, and I want to salute um, everybody at 104. Point five to beat in Orlando, man. D Strong and Pro Style and uh, uh, Kelly and Chloe. I, I broadcasted from there all last week in Orlando, Florida, man. And our, our, our iHeart family at 104.5 to beat in Orlando showed us a lot of love, man. Showed me a lot of love. So salute to them. And salute to the licking in Orlando, too. I'm a trans fat ass, so I went to both locations. Okay. I, I went to the one on Millennia Plaza Way, and I went to the one on Florida Mall Avenue. And um, just salute to the licking. The licking don't miss, bro. Not at all. Man, it's just saying Orlando. Shout Not out to Marcus Jordan. He opened up a trophy room store. They had shut it down before the pandemic, and now he has a brand new location that's open. Uh, they just did their opening over the weekend, too, in Orlando. So shout out to Marcus Jordan. Did you get no exclusives? You had no exclusives? There's something coming out. I think, to, is it today they have something? But no, I, listen, I didn't go there for that. I went no, to exactly. go support. I went to go to support his store. Absolutely. I did get some sneakers. So shout out to Marcus Jordan and also to my guy, Chef Gerald at Knife and Spoon at the Ritz Carlton in, um, in Orlando as well. Okay. All right. Well, when we come back, we got the positive notice. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do, man. The positive note is simple. Um, as you focus on clearing your generational trauma, do not forget to claim your generational strengths. Your ancestors gave you more than just wounds. Breakfast Club, bitches! Are y'all finished or y'all done? 